war stops at nothing, usually. But in a shocking twist, the Civil War did stop one day in St. Francisville in June 1863. This year, they celebrate 200 years of brotherhood and that very event. In one of the most critical battles of the Civil War, Confederate and Union forces were fighting for control of the Mississippi River in the Battle of Port Hudson. It was the longest siege in U.S. military history, 48 days. It started in May 1863 and continued into July. Conditions were miserable. The heat, unbearable. The surroundings, unlivable. Mosquitoes swarm like bees and spread disease faster than gunfire filled the sky. Union soldiers were killed by the thousands. Just as many died of sunstroke and disease. Confederate deaths were less, numbering only in the hundreds, but they were starving reduced to eating rats, dogs, even mules and horses. Both sides knew the winner of this battle would win the entire war. They were fueled by determination and dedication. But nearby in St. Francisville on June 12th, the war came to a complete stop. Bitter enemies put down their weapons and united for a purpose greater than war. The day the war stopped is a story of love, loss, and dignity, proving that even in the midst of the impossible, all things are possible. John Hart was Union commander of the USS Albatross. He was also a Mason. When he died suddenly, his officers knew he wanted a Masonic burial. They took a daring risk and went ashore under a flag of truce in St. Francisville to see if there were any Masons who'd conduct a funeral. There were, and they agreed. This will be the 20th year Masons at Feliciana Lodge 31 have honored that show of brotherhood with this reenactment of Hart's burial. Danny Honeycutt. Our brothers back then stopped the war to get together and marry one of our brothers. And to, to us, it means a lot. So we continue that with the reenactment every year. Francis Karwaski is a Mason at the same lodge in New York as Union Commander Hart. This is his 17th year to be here. We um, look at that and try and guide ourselves that way. As you can see, you know, the story here was the reason that, you know, they decided that it was the, the universality of the brotherhood of man. It's a story so rich and so rare, Mason Paul Martin says they had to share it. To have been felt as a part of the experience to realize how the brotherhood in masonry uh, goes beyond just your worldly, political, and in instances like that, it's, uh, it's deeper than that. It's, uh, it's sharing and helping one another out when they're in need. But this story would have never happened if not for Confederate Army Captain William Leake. He was home on furlough when Hart's officers came ashore. He was also a high-ranking Mason. He had the power and authority in the Confederacy and the Masons to have Hart buried here at Grace Episcopal Church. The hero in all of this is uh, Leek, because without Leek's uh, acceptance, then John Hart would have just been another dead Yankee. The story is now told because of another Louisiana Mason, St. Francisville's John Rarick. He's another reason Francis keeps coming back. It, it's truly an interesting story, and uh, John Rarick, uh, who was congressman from this area, uh, he started uh, the event uh, 18 years ago. John has passed on, but uh, 
I, I, he, he turned out to be a good friend of mine mm. over the course of years. So uh, it's a tribute to his memory as well as the memory of the, the brothers here in this lodge who continue to do this every year. Another Mason, Richard James, came down from New York with Francis last year to experience the reenactment for the first time. He's back again. He's impressed that for more than a century, Hart's grave has been cared for with such love and dignity. The way uh, the, con the Confederates took care of his body from the point of his death to even now, um, it's just incredible that you know, 150 years that they take the time and effort to take care of a member of our lodge. And not only because he's a Mason, but especially, you know, he's a member of our lodge. That's why it's so dear to us. Paul says it's a rare piece of history. It keeps alive this piece of history that happened that brought two, two brothers together, or two groups of brothers, which their, their countries were at at uh, differences and they had uh, hostilities towards one another but even during those hostilities the the brothers were able to reach an agreement to to perform the last masonic rites for a, a deceased brother it's a brotherhood even the civil war couldn't divide <laughs>